Hello, this is a video consent for inguinal hernia repair presented by CHI Health. By now, you will already have talked with your doctor about your inguinal hernia. In this video, I will walk you through the consent process for inguinal hernia repair. We will discuss the planned surgery as well as its risks, benefits, alternatives, and expected outcomes. Following this video, you will have an opportunity to ask questions. You will then be asked to review and sign the written consent form. A hernia is an outpouching of abdominal contents through your abdominal wall. In your case, your hernia is found in your inguinal canal, which is in your groin. These hernias can contain intra-abdominal fat, loops of bowel, or even other organs. Hernias can be present from birth or acquired throughout your life and can be worsened with heavy lifting. An inguinal hernia can be repaired electively if a patient desires to be rid of their hernia due to discomfort, pain, or appearance. Without repair, there is a small risk of small bowel obstruction, incarceration, which is when your hernia gets stuck outside of your abdomen, or strangulation, when the hernia contents get cut off from their blood supply and begin to die. Strangulation is a reason for emergent reduction, which is when you replace the hernia contents back into the abdomen, and subsequent repair of hernia. Sometimes, loops of bowel trapped in a strangulated hernia will no longer be viable and will require resection. Your surgery will be done in an operating room, either under local anesthesia with sedation or under general anesthesia, which is when you're completely asleep. All laparoscopic procedures are done under general anesthesia. The length of the procedure can vary, but it's usually one to two hours long. It is usually done through an open incision at your groin or through three or more small abdominal incisions with the help of a long camera. This is called laparoscopic surgery. In some cases, we may also use a robotic approach to assist in the laparoscopic procedure. In an open hernia repair, an incision is made at your groin and your hernia contents are replaced into your abdomen. The hernia sac is carefully dissected away and resected. Usually, a mesh will be sewn into place to prevent hernia recurrence, and then the skin incision will be sewn closed. For a laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair, we will enter your abdomen through tiny incisions and insufflate your abdomen with gas. Once we have done this, your inguinal hernia is located and your hernia is pulled back into the abdominal cavity and inspected. At this point, a mesh is placed internally to patch over your hernia site and fixed into place. We will then close your small incisions and your procedure will be complete. Rarely, a larger incision may be necessary if the procedure cannot be completed safely through these smaller incisions. In addition to your surgeon, an anesthesia provider, a surgical resident or surgical assistant, nurses and surgical technicians will be present in the operating room. Since this is a teaching hospital, medical students and other learners may also be present. Inguinal hernia repair is one of the most common surgeries that we do, but like all surgical procedures, there are potential risks. You must be aware of these potential risks in order to make an informed decision about whether or not to proceed with surgery. Not every possible risk can be addressed here, but we will discuss some of the most relevant ones. Significant bleeding, though rare, may require hospitalization, blood transfusion, or in some cases return to the operating room. Infection is a risk which can occur in the abdomen, in the surgical incisions, at your implanted mesh, or in other parts of the body. We will give you a dose of IV antibiotics right before surgery to help decrease this risk, but even with an uncomplicated inguinal hernia repair, infection may still occur. In some cases of strangulation, it is possible for us to reach your hernia and find that the hernia contents, usually bowel, have died or perforated. This situation will require resection of the dead bowel, and usually the remaining bowel can be reconnected. If there is any concern for infection beyond the hernia, we may wash out the abdomen, leave a drain, or keep you on antibiotics for a short time following surgery. Infection or inflammation in the abdomen increases the risk of developing an abscess after the surgery. An abscess is a walled off infection that typically forms about a week after your surgery. Treatment may include more antibiotics, drain placement by interventional radiology, or another surgery. Some other risks of inguinal hernia repair include recurrence of hernia, new hernia formation at laparoscopic incision sites, chronic pain due to mesh placement, 
urinary retention following your procedure, injury to the bowel or other surrounding structures, blood clot formation in your legs which can travel to your lungs, or very rarely, death. Inguinal hernia repair sometimes requires the use of general anesthesia, which is the process of putting you to sleep for surgery. Your anesthesia provider will meet with you before your surgery to discuss the risks involved with general anesthesia. The main benefits of this operation include fixing your inguinal hernia, improving your symptoms, and preventing it from becoming strangulated. Non-surgical management of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic inguinal hernias includes watchful waiting and is generally an accepted alternative to immediate surgical repair. By contrast, incarcerated or strangulated inguinal hernias are surgical emergencies and not undergoing surgery on these could lead to worsening of clinical status or even death. After the operation is completed, you will awaken from anesthesia and be moved to the recovery room where staff members will monitor you closely for a few hours. For uncomplicated repairs, it is common to send patients home the same day. For emergent repairs, usually patients will stay in the hospital for one or more nights following surgery. You can expect to have some pain from the incisions, which will be treated with pain medication prescribed by your doctor. Some nausea medication may also be provided if needed. An ileus is the motility problem in your intestines, which can cause a delayed return of bowel function following surgery. This can lead to nausea and vomiting and could lengthen your hospital stay. Before you leave the hospital, detailed instructions will be provided, including information on lifting restrictions, returning to work, wound care, and planned clinic follow-up with your surgeon. We hope you have found this video to be informative. Please let your doctor know if you have any questions or concerns before signing the written consent form and proceeding with surgery.